Okay, welcome back for week five. This week we're going to do divided wings. We're going to start with the split wing, and then uh, on the second fly we'll do we'll take the split wing and make them upright and divided. A lot to start doing here, so let's just get moving. I'm going to start my thread. Three bodkin widths behind the eye. There's going to be a lot of stuff that starts to happen up front, so you want to make sure that you've got adequate. Uh, space. And I'm just going to take our thread. You can really cut that out when you're ready and you're comfortable. And just to put a thread base in, we're going to bring it back to basically where the bend starts or where the barb would be. Uh, this will be kind of up to you here. Um, but wherever you put this final thread wrap, that's where we're going to stop when we come back on the tail. So we're going to just bring our thread back forward to where we started. Now I've already cleaned and stacked my wings and my tail. So if you need to do that and you're tying along, make sure you do that now and just gently pull and roughly get our distance out of the slide. And we're looking for a distance that's the length of the hook shank, uh, maybe even slightly longer, you can do that. Uh, and if you've been following along throughout this entire session, remember we're tying concave side down. If you have concaved, uh, if there's a curvature to the deer hair, make sure the concave side's down. I'm just going to take it, fold it over with the two pinches, two pinch wraps, sorry, and pull up. I'm going to place some thread wraps in back. We're lift up and directionally angle our thread back into the wing just to help it uh, seat. Now there's a couple ways you can tackle cutting this off here. Uh, one is you can collect all of this and just lift it up and then bring a thread wrap in and under on the back side as you pull your thread forward, keeping all of that, the bottom side of the shank exposed. Uh, and you can also, which I don't think we've covered this one yet, so let me put this back down. I'm going to jump my thread back and get this to flare around the hook shank again. That's pretty good. So as the deer hair is wrapped around the hook shank, we'll do it this way just so we're just changing stuff up. I can show you different things. Get that thread back up front and out of the way. Okay, we're going to start by inverting the fly. And you want to get a fine pair of scissors. The, the finer they are, the better. And we're going to start ju by just sliding uh, the scissors along the bottom side of the hook shank and trimming out as close to that thorax position as possible. So we'll start on the bottom, and then we're going to start working up the sides. And you can do that either way, which, which, you know, whichever way works better for you. You need to do that. Both will get you to the same destination. Now, when you're tying on smaller flies, I actually prefer that first way just a little bit better, just because. Um, it really exposes or keeps the bottom exposed and really helps eliminate everything a little bit better, I think. Okay, so now we've got all this off to the side. We want to make sure our wing and all of our wing pieces here, our little individual hairs are up front. We're going to do the same thing by bringing some of these fibers up front. And just like we've done before, we'll just gently drop our thread over that wing just to hold it in place. Now, another thing you can do here that we haven't done is you can take the rest of your fibers here. This one guy is just going to be in my way. Okay, that'll work. So we can collect these fibers here. 
hold them up at a 45 degree angle. Bring your scissors in at a 45 degree angle. So we're making an X. And you're going to take your scissors, at the tips of your points of the scissors, down to the back, the last thread wrap. Don't go past that. We want to keep that on the inside of what uh, the thread base that we've made. We just trim this out like so. Now we can undo this. We'll get our thread back over into the middle. We need to wax our thread here. And there's something else I can show you that we, you can do. I haven't seen this done too much, but it does help. Uh, you can take your wax and actually wax this material, including the top of your hook shank, before you start to bring your thread wraps back to the back. So if you just need something else to try to help with that, you can. And so as we start to wrap this guy back, I'm just going to get it started trying to keep all these little fibers down. And if you need to cut them out along the way, that's fine, or we can come back and cut them out uh, more towards the end here. We're gonna start to just open spiral our thread back to the back. Now, once we start getting into the middle of the part that we cut di uh, directionally, just pull down on your thread and pop a few fibers off, make another wrap or two, pop a few fibers off, wrap or two, pop a few fibers off until we get to down to the end. Okay. And, well, where did they go? Oh, they're in my pocket. I went fishing and I put my fingernail clippers in my pocket. Here they are. Uh, so now we can bring in the fingernail clippers or a fine pair of scissors or whatever you want to do and just clean up any stragglers that we have. You're, you're going to get a few. It's not a big deal if you just get a few. The, the more you get, the more bulky and everything the fly can become. So you want to try to really keep it down. But now as we come back forward, we want to really tighten all this down, trying to capture and trap as much of it as possible as well as helping get this, uh, you know, the classic cigar shape that we've talked about in the previous weeks. And if, if I'm skipping some of the techniques or I'm referring to some of the previous weeks, it's just stuff that we've already covered. Um, and then, you know, if I have to go back and explain every single thing every time, it just makes these videos ridiculously long. And this one will probably already be a little long. So I'm going to try to keep it down. Okay, so now we're looking good. So we've got a decent profile started. We're going to move to our tail. Oop. I had it stacked and it moved. Let me get this stacked one more time. Oh yeah, that'll work. And you can wax your thread if you like here or whatever. But we want to have our tail. Again, you can choose depending on whatever you're trying to uh, imitate. And you can also change the body colors. And all the stuff we've already done, you can, you can kind of go back to and, and use for the body. So we want to have it about the length of the shank. I'll transfer the distance over to my left thumb, left index. I want to pinch that point right down on where that thread wrap is in the back. So as I bring this over with a couple of loose turns and start to tighten, we can start to capture it. I'm going to open spiral wrap this back. You want to try to keep this even and neat. And then when, as you get closer to the back, don't have your fingers up like this. Try to get them more in line with the shank. And it'll be the same thing we've talked about. I'm going to turn this over just so you can see it just a little bit. When you get back to the back, don't forget we want to have a bodkin width where we have loose turns so our tail does not flare. And as we get to the back, we want to start to loosen up and try to drive this down like so. 
Don't forget to unspool with your fingers. And that turned out pretty well. Okay, if you've got your tail that's dropping down too much, you can lift it up. Or if you just want it to pop up more, you can put a thread wrap underneath. And just a couple of loose ones over the top. So that we have a fly that looks about like this. Now, another thing that you can do, you just want to be careful doing this so you don't glue the whole tail shut. <clears throat> I don't necessarily normally do this unless my tail's getting all haywire on me, but you can kind of flatten this out and just take a little bit of your super glue. Don't use UV resin, just super glue. But then we can push the glue down into the tips of the butt of the tail, so where the tail meets the abdomen. We only want to get that glue into no more than right about here. And that's just going to help keep that tail from going haywire. So what I like to do is I'll start my glue on the back and kind of just dab forward. Uh, and you can kind of let it set for just a minute. And in the meantime, we can come in and collect all of this and cut it out. You want to get this stuff as close as possible. Something about like that. And just kind of dab that just to help. And so we have this kind of nice little fantail. And if you need to get a little closer, you know, you can go get your fingernail clippers and trim some of this stuff away. Okay. So we need to gently unspool the thread. If you don't have enough out already, we're going to wax the thread. And we're going to twist up some dubbing here. Um, again, you could use body wrap here, like EP fiber, um, bucktail, that's a fun one. Um, you know, different types of dubbing, whatever you want. Uh, I mean, this is a dry fly, so you just kind of, you got to be kind of conscientious. Inches. I can never say that word. Uh, but you need to you need to be that um, of the materials that you're using, so you're not drowning the back end of your fly. I mean, I guess that's what you want, unless you, that's what you're trying to do intentionally. Now you can twist it up like we've done on some of the past flies. You can just uh, you know you let the uh, when I say twist it up, I just mean you spin your bobbin and let it helicopter until it ropes up for you. You can twist it on like so. You really just want to keep your noodle, your dubbing noodle, as even as possible just because we've already pre-tapered the fly. Okay. And I'm going to start to work this guy forward. And then once we've passed that thread base, now we can start to put more pressure on and more uh, tension on our wrapping. Need to thin that down and probably get just a touch more here. back this off and tighten that down just a little bit. Get that a little too much dubbing right there. Yeah, that's better, I think. And we want to stay off of this ever so slightly because we are going to figure eight the thorax in. touch too much fiber there. Uh, now for the actual thorax itself you can use what you want. I, uh, I missed a little spot right there. 
uh, and we'll get to but we'll get to that in a minute. First, what we're going to do is we've got to just, we've got to start dividing these wings, and so we just want to kind of just like we did the comparadon wing, you're going to take it, kind of force it open into an arc, and kind of just loosely divide it. And I'm going to bring my thread up from underneath and over across the top so that all of my we want all of our thread wraps when we're splitting these to go to the back if possible. Um, you don't want to have them coming back forward because it collapses that wing forward. We want all of the pressure and tension of our thread wraps coming up from underneath and to the back. And there's some ways to handle that. So I'm just going to make probably about three passes. And then what you can do is just pull this other wing out of the way and then get a wrap in front of that wing so that now your thread's working on the shank and not the deer here. Oops, I trapped some stuff there. You can see I need to put another one in. So we have something like this. Oops. Okay. Okay, and I'm going to start. You can start with either side, but the goal here is that we, if you can see this, the goal here is that we get our wings to be about even right there in the front. If I had a third hand, I could show you, but you can start with either side. And we're going to start to place thread wraps around the base. You want this right tied into the base right next to the thorax and you want to do about three turns or so so when you're doing this on the side it works a little bit better kind of for me at least at a slight angle like this and as you're pulling you're pulling this to the back and having this flare open actually is kind of what what you want okay and now we can move to the other side so I'm going to Come around the front. Come on, you get around there. Down tight into the base of the thorax. Let me come back to this other side and do this other side just once or twice to try to even that out. The uh, look of it. Okay, now I want to come back to the front side. And so we've got something. <clears throat> that's sitting open about like this. Now since we're on the front side, if you've got the room, you can just pull these back, place a few thread wraps up front, just to kind of start the process here. And I want to take a piece of silver flashaboo, and this is totally up to you, you don't have to do this, now this is just something, if you if you kind of want a hot spot on one of these, uh, this is just a way to, to do that. So that, uh, you know, when you're fishing, you can see this on the water, or it can help uh, helps you locate it on the water. So as we wrap this back, I'm going to trim this one side out. Now you can go a couple of ways here. You can actually bring your thread to the back and go ahead and tie that in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get just a few pieces of deer hair. Just get them cleaned out. We don't really need to line them up or stack them or anything. But you just want to make sure it's cleaned out. Uh, if you want to make legs, you, uh, I would suggest stacking it. And we're going to take our deer hair, we're going to tie it in tip forward. If you want to make the legs, you want to go at least, you know, the length of the shank. We can tie this in right up front, and if it flares open, up up front and on top. Uh, if it flares open, it's not a big deal. 
So we'll leave those in and we'll fold those over. And now we just got to move this wing back into the position that it's supposed to be. And you want to try to keep your wing case flat across the top. And we can just come right over, cross right over in between, and get a wrap right in the back. Now when you're lining this up on the side, you want to make sure that you're you're going back into the thorax, even if it's just by a thread wrap or so. And uh, again, be cautious of pulling down on your thread. Now, at this point, we can do, um, you can do peacock curl, you can do a different kind of dubbing. Uh, it's really, really up to you. Here's one, here's one I already did with peacock curl, so you can kind of see it. I know that's, Got a bunch of geef on my desk, but there's one I did with put a few little tongue tied, a few little legs in underneath. Uh, so you can do that if you want, or you can just you know dub something on. I'm gonna go back to the um, chocolate hairs uh, mask just because it's buggy, and uh, I can show you a different way to get legs. So you're, you'll have, by doing using that dubbing. Uh, that'll be a different technique that you can use to get legs, or you can use this here. We'll get to both. <clears throat> but we're going to figure eight this uh, thorax in, and that's just so that we're getting all of the uh, bottom side covered. So we don't have anything, you know, thread wraps and whatever else exposed underneath. We want to make sure that that stuff is totally cleaned up. So I'm just going to start by placing a wrap right over the back, right where my thread wrap is. And now I can come down underneath and check to make sure that it's coming in. You can see a little bit of thread exposed there. It's not, not a super big deal. So now as I come up and around, I'm going to come down and under, now up and around again. And we don't, we're not worried about if the top is covered, it's just the bottom. And so once we have that covered, you can pull these back, these being the wings, and we can place some thread wraps and dubbing up front. And if you take a look underneath and you say, you know, I'm not sure that that's totally covered where I'd like to see it, then we'll do it again. And again, coming underneath and then around. And see, I told you there's a lot going on up front. So I'm actually going to pull this dubbing off here. I don't need it. We don't want to overcrowd it. And having a, some of this stuff a little loose is all right. So I'm going to place just a couple of thread wraps right in front under what is eventually going to be the legs and then get my thread back to the front side of the wing. And I want to open these up. Get them seated where I want them. Um, now I don't usually glue these wings open, but if you're if you're having a hard time keeping them open, uh, I'll just show you so that it's something you can do. It, you know, I recommend that you try to avoid doing this. But you can put a little bit of glue right on your bodkin, and then get that placed right up next to the thorax. And when you pinch and pull, that glue is going to help lock that wing. In where, right where you want it. Um, you, know, you don't want to use very much, 
and uh, again I try to learn to not do this but if you need you know sometimes we need a little crutch just to get us over the hump so if you need to do this do it okay now we're gonna take our wing case Oops, let me clip there. And we want to try to get this flat. So you can just take your thumb or your finger and lay it flat and then start to draw it so that the fibers become as flat as possible. And then what we're going to do is we're going to place a thread wrap over. Leave your hair up so that we can guide the thread. You can see how that's kind of being held up. We can guide the thread right where we want it to be and then place another thread wrap or so over that location now i'm just going to go ahead and bring my flashaboo and again the flashaboo and the wing case and all that stuff is totally this is all option stuff if you're not comfortable putting this stuff in yet don't uh, if you want to do if you want to change colors do that you know but we can just do the uh, same technique with the uh, flashaboo right over the top and now what we're going to do is we are going to pull down to intentionally flare all of that open I'm going to come back between these little legs and our deer hair that's going to be legs and I'm going to place a wrap kind of dividing those two And we can actually come in and clip all this out. Back just a little bit and then to help get the legs in just take them drop them down <clears throat> and fold them underneath take your bodkin and you can start to shove them and that's going to get your little legs to kind of come to the back if that's what you're looking to do and then you can start just building your head and start the front and work to the back just to get all this tied down I'll do it one more time, start in the front, or jump my thread to the front, work to the back. This is where you want to really take your time and put directional, precise thread wraps in right where you need them to build the head. And then to finish it off, we'll wet, uh, wet whip, and... just a touch close to that eye then I'm gonna let it ride I can still get a piece of tippet through there my head turned out a little bit bigger than I wanted that's because I've got the deer hair for legs which honestly I don't normally use that so that the deer hair is the legs um, but it is an option, so I'll flip this over so you can see it. And it just kind of helps, you know, kind of give that mayfly look. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut these out as close as possible. So yes, I'm going to intentionally kind of destroy part of this fly so we can do the other one. <clears throat> and I like this one much better because it doesn't help create that bigger profile in the head and all that. But some people really like those deer hair legs, and there's a couple couple people I've seen are super, super good at getting them in and making them look just right. I can do okay at them, but I don't like them as much. I think they, they're... On something like this, they blend in with the fly too much <clears throat> for my liking. 
Okay, and so now we can just come in and pick out or brush out or use some Velcro, some of this dubbing. And you don't want to do a ton. We get some of this picked out. to help drop down some legs that way. If you get a couple deer hairs that fall underneath, that's fine. I pack this dubbing pretty tight and it doesn't want to come out. That's a good thing. All right, I'm not gonna monkey with this too much. I could sit here and groom this back end all day and we've got bigger fish to fry. We've got another fly to do. So it's really up to you. <coughs> it's really up to you. Doing the deer hair legs would be probably more, a little bit more appropriate if you were going to use like, um, you know, a peacock curl or something like that that you can't pick out. Um, with wrap with, you know, hair's mask, you can, you can pick that out though and So there we go, there's a couple dropping down. Something like that. Okay. There is whoa, sorry. There is the spinner wings and how you make the spinner wings. And so let's move over and do the upright and divided wings. Alright, let's do the upright and divided wings. Again, I've got my tail and uh deer hair stacked and separated and we're going to go ahead and start our thread again back now uh, two and a half to three bodkin widths behind the eye and the reason for that is i know last week on the comparida and i said i'd touch on this and then <clears throat> if you followed me for any time you know i'm more of a win in rome do rome type person so we'll just go ahead and build the whole fly. And if you did, if you got a material kit, I uh, I knew that I might change my mind at some point, and so I made sure to send enough hackle uh, for you guys to do this as well. Uh, at least give it a, a try, and you can kind of play around with the different colors. So we're going to start back again, about two and a half, three bodkin wisps behind the eye, and probably about two, and right about two and a half. Uh, and we'll go ahead and put a thread base down. Again, same thing that we just did. Uh, take your thread base down and stop where you want the back of the fly to stop so we don't move past this uh, back point and bring your thread forward. Again, we're going to start with the wings. And we are going to change tactics here just a little bit. And we're going to go and uh, do some more traditional work and things that you see uh, on other videos that are more common and uh, the reason we just haven't done that through the first part of the session is just because uh, the whole folding of the um, deer hair down and over onto the body I find tends to help it makes it a little bit more manageable uh, for especially new fly tires but a lot of people that struggle with this so we're going to measure our wing uh, same distance as we did before, just maybe just slightly past the eye. These, this part of the tactic doesn't change. I'll just keep using the same techniques that work. Go ahead and pull up. And place a few tight wraps behind. Grab the front of the wing. Place some angle wraps. If I can get, there we go right in front, right into the base of that wing so that they're standing up. And we're gonna change the tempo here. So this time we're gonna lift this up, pull forward so we're exposing the bottom and keeping all of that hair on top. I'm gonna do this with two wraps just to help secure it so that everything is nice and clean under the bottom and you can clearly see the shank here. And I'm going to advance my thread forward in front of the wing just to get it out of the way. <clears throat> and 
You want to separate it. You can lick your fingers to draw it forward if needed. And what we're going to do here is we're going to lift up. We're going to do that same kind of X maneuver that we did uh, on the last one. I'm going to go ahead and place a few wraps over this wing just to get it down and out of my way so I don't accidentally cut something here that I don't want to cut. And this time, instead of going to the back, we're going to tilt our angle quite a bit closer. Almost like we were doing the um, uh, wing buds back on the emerger session. And you can actually take your fingernail clippers and get in real close here if you need to. But you want to make sure you have enough room to tie some of this stuff down so don't get too crazy uh, unless you know you're really comfortable with what you're doing so this is you know kind of like one of your uh sorry one of those uh take your time type deals so we're going to bring our thread back to the back and now we're going to tie this in and we want to tie this in with nice tight touching turns consecutively uh, next to each other. Now you can see the huge difference. We don't have the cigar shape and often what happens is people start to compensate for that cigar shape right away. And uh, I would suggest you don't do that and try this way. <clears throat> so we want to make sure our wing is sticking out. It's fairly even on top. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, we're going to leave our thread about halfway through this buildup. You don't need to bring it all the way to the forefront and directly behind the wing. We'll, we will move to our tail. I'm going to measure it up and line it up all the same direction, same way. Length, you know, again, whatever you want. And this time, as we take a few thread wraps over, you can use wax here if you need to. I might go ahead and do that. Just because it helps collect the hair on this part. <clears throat> okay, set this on top. If you need to get it on top and it's not working, set it directionally off to the side just to fuzz. So as it's collecting, you're getting it on top. But this time we want to keep loose thread wraps up front. Don't flare this front part uh, open. So kind of like how we've done in the past with loose thread wraps out back, do loose thread wraps up front when you get about a half bokken width to a bokken width behind the eye. Now you can tighten and it doesn't move as much. So now we're going to tighten this down, again working our hand uh, to bring the tail down flat or more in line with the shank as we tighten down. And again, using the fingers to unspool the thread, don't, don't change tactics here, uh, we will loosen up our thread wraps as we maneuver our thread to the back so that it's in line with where we decided to stop originally. That's not too bad, I got a couple that popped open. That's, the more you play with it, the more it pops open. So we'll go ahead and lift this up and drop a couple of thread wraps underneath and around. And place a couple more loose ones right over the top. Like so. This one's dropping down to the side a little bit. I'll try to keep that sort of like this. Uh, and then again, if you need, if you need to, you can start to groom out with a fine pair of scissors some of the stuff that's dropping down and around. Or you can just kind of lift everything up again and do 
the glue trick where we're starting on the thread and pushing it into the wing ever so slightly. And just kind of drawing it through and holding it in place until uh, it's going to set and help seat the back of that tail. And you may have to give it a minute or so. Um, so we'll hang out for just a second to let that happen. In the meantime, we're going to go ahead and get our uh, dubbing ready. We're not going to use it just yet. Uh, if you wanted, wanted to do body wrap material, uh, which I meant to mention on the last one, what you're going to do is when we bring our thread back forward and, and advance it to finish this gap off to help eliminate that step that we just created. Um, you could tie, <clears throat> excuse me, you could tie in your uh, body wrap in the back and then bring it forward. You can also, again, come in and do things like the rib and all that stuff uh, that we've already shown in the past. And those are, again, just tools for you to use as you find necessary. So we're going to start to advance this forward now that we've given our glue just a second to dry and tightly wrap coming forward. We want to keep all of this loose deer hair on top. You can see how there's that gap there that we want to fix. And so as we come up through this gap, or to the gap, I should say, we're pulling up and helping keep everything up top. If you pull down, it's going to really flare. So loose over the top as you come around, pull up. And this is just going to help keep everything in line on the top as you make those thread wraps come forward. And so as we start to encroach, we're going to ever so gently do the same thing that we did with the tail in the back by just pulling a few off. You can cut them off, place another thread wrap, loose over, pull up, a couple more, whoops, loose over, pull up, couple more and you can kind of collect everything and keep bringing it forward as you're tying it in got that one that's hanging out on the bottom it's gonna drive me nuts so you can start to see as we close the gap on the front side uh, it's closing that I'm sorry as we advance our thread on the front side it's starting to close that gap off and make the cigar shape that we're looking for and this is just another technique and tactic to do that. Uh, what happens a lot of the time is people get very much in a hurry uh, to tie the fly and whatever. Now, I'm not saying that doing it that way where you're in a hurry and you have the big gap and everything and you just leave it and try to correct it with dubbing is wrong. I'm not saying that at all. I mean, it obviously works for people. Um, but if you're trying to make your flies look a little bit nicer, uh, that doing that method is a real challenge. And so as we work this back up over the top the other way, we can effectively do the same thing. It's, uh, it's just not quite as easy when you're working forward instead of, instead of to the back. That's all. And so time we get up front we should have relatively a good cigar shape again and uh, you know again this is just to show different techniques and different ways to achieve what you're trying to do and maybe this way works better for you than the other way and if that's the case then do it this way don't don't do it the other way you can interchange these techniques it's not like it just you know these techniques are only good for one fly they're good for many many flies um, so do what's going to work best for you that's the whole point of a lot of these and what we're what we're doing here there we go now that tail looks a whole lot better okay so now oh, we've got one two there 
Oop, sorry, did not mean to bump my camera there. It's just it's difficult to get my fingers in the position I need them to because I get stuff in my way. I have to really contort, and I am not a trained contortionist. Okay. Okay, so when we're doing this, now we can take our thread, start to bring it to the back nice and tight to help build that body and uh, hopefully have a decent cigar shape there. Personally, I don't do it this way very often. I know a lot of people do. Uh, I, I don't like the techniques as much on this one. But I want to make sure that I'm showing them. And there's all kinds of little neat tips and tricks you can find from people all over the place that tie it this way. And so I'm not knocking them at all. Oops. And on there, dubbing. And so again, with a sort of pre-tapered shape, to the fly, uh, we want to keep our dubbing noodle uh, as even as possible. Get that separated and drawn out. We ran a poll in the group over at Fly Time for Beginners on Facebook, and it looks like the next session people are wanting is in fact a dubbing session. We did a dubbing session a few years ago where we focused on uh, taper dubbing and uh, so on. And it looks like that's what people are wanting again is to do another dubbing session. So that is a good chance that's what's coming next. I'll try to do what people want. So. The only reason I'm not explaining all these techniques again is because I've already, already explained them fairly well. Now this one just wants to give me fits. Keep that dummy noodle nice and tight. Overlap just ever so slightly. Come on you, it's just not sitting in place. And we're going to work this forward. And this time, instead of leaving this little gap here, because we're not going to figure eight, we're just going to bring our dubbing all the way up, right up on top of that wing, and then bring our thread to the front side. If you have a gap in the back, it's really not a big deal. Oops, knocking stuff over there. Well, I can see that on camera, but I cannot see it in real life. <clears throat> okay, so same type deal. We're going to flare this open intentionally, get it moved around so that we can create the upright and divided wings. Now, this technique is going to work uh, the same whether you're using, say, like calf tail or snow no, uh, snowshoe rabbit or deer hair or uh, I mean even uh, things like mallard flank or wood duck technique is the same material is different so what we're going to do is we're going to separate this place a thread wrap over the back so that I can come around the front grab and pull to the back to create that V shape now this is where everything starts to come together. I like to start on the back side. Again, you want to make sure that you have the wings so that they're sitting sort of parallel with one another when you pull them apart as close as possible. And we're going to, as we bring this around, again, we're going to start at the base. But this time, instead of leaving it close to the thorax like we would do for the spinner we just did, we're going to start to build a post 
and slowly build this post coming up so that it's capturing all of that wing together. And then back down. And before you pull, make sure you get a wrap around the hook shank so that you're now dealing with the hook shank and it's not affecting your wing. That's a kind of a common mistake that's seen. So if you can see this, right here we've got these little posts started. We may actually need to make that post a little bit bigger. This fly is actually already much closer to being done than you might imagine. So we're going to start to just collect this with the at the base. Oops, I've got to undo that. I need more thread. Came the wrong way anyway. We want to be pulling to the back, not the front. Now, one thing you don't want to do is over do the post and come too far up. And the reason for that is, is then the hackle starts to hide that. I'm trying to do this on the side so you can see. So we've got a, that post and now we're going to work back down. Unspooling by hand. And we are going to need to bring this post up just a little bit more. Just a little bit. That's good. And we'll bring it back down. And again, get a thread wrap over that hook shank so that now your your thread's messing with the hook shank and not there. Okay, so very much like a spinner wing, yes? Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take, we're just going to pinch and lift them up together. And that's really the main difference between doing upright and divided and a spinner style wing is that maneuver right there. Now, as you as you see these wings are starting to pull forward, now you can really see these little posts that we've built when I turn it to the side. What you want to do is just bring your thread in front and pull to the back. And you only need to do this at the base. Don't do it up top so that they're moving to the back. And they should start to collapse on one another a little bit more. So now at this point we can bring our thread up front. You just want to kind of hold those wings in place as we angle wrap right into that base. But don't, do, don't overdo it because we want to leave the bottom somewhat flush. Right now, I don't. Again, I don't use a ton of glue and a ton of wax. I mean, I've been showing where to use them and when to use them. In this case, on upright and divided wings, I do use glue almost every single time. And what I'll do is I'll bring in my glue right up front to the front side of the lower, the, the lower front side of the front part of the base, and then again I will split that wing open. Often I'll just actually just put it on my bodkin. And I need to turn this upright just so I can get it down in there. And I'll put, use the glue off my bodkin to solidify the wing placement and do it in the center. Try not to do it off to the sides uh, to where it affects the hackle. And so now that we have those in place, we want to give it just a second to let that glue set up. Uh, that's going to be one of the key factors there. And this is a good time to come in and because since we're just kind of waiting and say, oh, I don't like that one. I'm going to get rid of that one. Or, uh, you know, maybe, maybe you don't like this one up top here or whatever. Uh, so now you can kind of groom the back end of the fly. Don't over groom it. When it gets in the water, a lot of this is going to connect together anyway. So we're going to give it just a second. I'm going to get a drink of water real quick. <clears throat> and then we're going to put the, uh, we'll tie the, uh, peacock curl and we're gonna do peacock curl for the thorax which is an old-school technique you don't see that much in dry flies anymore these days but again while we're here let's do it and um, then I'll tie the hackle in
<clears throat> Throat's just getting a little dry. Okay, so what I'm going to do here with my peacock curl is I'm just going to take two, and just like we did in previous weeks, I'm going to get them, I'm going to cut the tips out, get down into the beefier part of the stem. Uh, where I'm taking this off of the hurl is further down. Uh, this stuff is good for quill body. This stuff is much better to get that bushy effect on the fly. So we'll go ahead and tie this in up front. And work that thread forward if I need to, just so that I'm cleaning everything up. And I'm gonna jump my thread over to the back side. And I wanna work this on the bottom so that I'm starting on the bottom. But I wanna make sure my thread is lining up right where I'm meeting up to the abdomen or just inside of where I've already wrapped to the ab abdomen. just to make sure we have positive connection there. And now I can come back forward. Now we're gonna prepare the hackle. Uh, this looks black, but it's actually just a dun. I'm going to strip off some hackle on both sides, so I've got exposure to the stem. And then what I like to do uh, is I like to take off about an extra eighth of an inch or so uh, on the side that I'm actually wrapping the hackle. So that way when I tie this in, I work it to the back. It's sitting nice and even along the shank, so as I come up and over, I've got flat stem for my first turn or so. And then what that actually does is it helps kind of build like a little hackle wall and it helps stop barbs from shooting to the back. Uh, I mean, it's not a perfect technique, but it is something that can help. So we're gonna get my thread up front. We wanna remain about a bodkin width behind the eye. <clears throat> and we're gonna go ahead and twist our hurl here. Just use my uh, hackle pliers. I'm gonna twist this up again. Don't over twist the hurl. Just twist it up fairly decent. Put a wrap in, twist it up some more. And uh, you don't have to do this. Again, these are uh, putting in this is like sort of, sort of like an under thorax, really, because the hackle catches a lot of it. It's an older technique. Now, on something like this, we don't need to figure eight. If you do want to figure eight, you can do that. So we'll do it just to do it. But it, what the figure eight does here is it tends to add a tad bit more uh, underneath than I normally like. Uh, but it's different strokes for different folks, and you can do it both ways. Uh, and the reason we don't have to figure eight here is simply because the hackle is going to uh, cover a lot of that up. And so as we come around, I'm going to move that hurl to the front side of my thread. Sorry, I was concentrating there. We'll tie that in going to the back, and now we can trim this out. And at this point, we really just want to make sure that below the eye is clear um, with any hurl. So if you if you've got something, stick in there. Try to address it now, uh, maybe by just a couple of real precision thread wraps or something like that. Now we're going to take this hackle and we're going to hackle this right over the top of that hurl. And you, again, you don't even have to put all this hurl in. You, if you don't like to do that, don't do it. I'm just showing it because it's stuff that we've done in the past and uh, it's something that you can do and can try. So as we wrap this forward, 
We're going to get right up front here. And I'll show another little technique. And some people like to really lay the ha hackle heavy here. Um, you don't need to as much with it being deer hair. I'll be honest with you. So as we come over, we're going to, whoops, turn that hackle and cut, trapped a bunch of it. We're going to place a few wraps in. Now if you start to encroach on this eye, what you can do is draw some thread out, get your half hitch tool, do a double half hitch, force everything to the back, place your half hitch tool right where you want that hackle to stop. Okay, so now we've got everything clear of the eye. They used to make uh, little hackle guards that were kind of like these uh, flat, um, I don't know how you describe them, kind of like this little flat disc that you'd put over the hook eye where your thread, there'd be like a little slit through it and your thread would come up front and then you could hackle it or uh, tie it off and then remove that. Uh, you can actually still find them. Uh, I'm not sure it's necessary anymore, but I'm sure some people still use them. And then before we finish, we're going to go ahead and wet whip and call it gravy. Oops. Trapped one there. Trapped two. That's alright, we'll get it cleaned up. Okay. Another thing for your hackle is you can use cuticle clippers to come in and pop that stem. <coughs> Pardon me. And, you know, if you get a couple hackle fibers trapped, which, you know, what happens from time to time, it's not a big deal. Just come in with a really nice fine pair of scissors and trim it out. Okay, that's going to wrap it for the Divided Wings week, week five. Next week, we're going to move, that's glue that you see there. I got to get a new can of uh, thing of glue. It's turning into more like a rope and something. Uh, but next week, as we move into the final week of the Deer Hair Wing Session, we're going to get real crazy. We're going to do a hackle stacker and uh, a parachute. Um, and we're going to build one of those two completely out of deer hair. Uh, the hackle for the parachute will be deer hair. Uh, it'll be a deer hair post, deer hair hackle. So we're going to get we're going to get real challenging there. And uh, that one's going to drive me nuts. So I'm going to get rid of it just before we go, so I can take some pictures and get them ready uh, to post in the group. And uh, other than that, everybody, happy tying. Thanks for sticking around for week five, and I will see you in the final week, week six of the Deer Hair Wing, wing Session next week. Take care. Happy tying.